has labored, he has suffered to lead his people into the land of freedom. He is the Redeemer and He has labored, he has suffered to lead his people into the land of freedom. He is the Redeemer and He has labored, he has suffered to lead his people into the land of freedom. He is the Redeemer and He has labored, he has suffered to lead his people into the land of freedom. He is the Redeemer and he has labored. And welcome back to the Mother of All Talk Shows, Alaji and Alaji, live on Pan African Television. Uh, we apologize for that breaking transmission. We lost power. Yeah, the lights went out, simply put. Uh, well, we're discussing the issue of the World Bank country director's comments. So let me allow Alaji, who is the last person speaking on that topic, to conclude so that we can move so, on so to other Bank, issues. In fact, whoever has put the lights off knows that we can be stopped. The World Bank uh, and, uh, and their representative, is it the IMF for the World Bank representative in Ghana? Pierre Laporte. Yeah, World Bank representative. World Bank. Good. He said, well, it's half Ukraine uh, Russian war placating the government mm -hmm. and half uh, issues other than domestic issues. Now, they are not prepared to listen to that, but I will remind them. This is what John Dramani Muhammad said. And they should tell me which of that is not true. He said, the consequences of the government's ill-advised policies such as the botched, insensitive, and dubious cost in closing down locally owned banks, unbridled levels of corruption, and lack of accountability, including mismanagement of COVID-19 funds, unconventional growing practices, riddled with opaqueness and conflict of interest, resulting in an unsustainable debt envelope, costly experimental and tested programs, and so on, cannot be ignored in understanding the current dire state of the Ghanaian economy. And whoever is listening, which of what John Draman Mama has said is not true? So, we are in this together. The problem is that when ac accountability in Ghana, especially political accountability, is always put to regime accountability. And let no one say that if there's a regime change and there's a post-regime accountability, that will be a huge hamper of the ambassador. Thank you. Thank you, Alaji. Um, let me do a few messages since we've been on for a while, and then we can move on to the next issue. This is Tony Gavuzini. That's his name. He says, good morning. I so far admired the former, I think he meant to say, former deputy organizer of the MPP on the on Alaji and Alaji. He has been forthright and whatever he has said is on point. That's Tony Gavuzini. There's uh, Tafai Namah here, who is also joining us. So now my brother from Nadoli has spoken well. I believe this is how politicians must be speaking regarding the things that affect our nation. Kudos to him. So now I tell him to go to Nadoli and register to join the only party that cares for good people of this country, which is NDC. And since he has tried for so long to go to parliament, he will get the opportunity as member of the NDC. Inshallah, he should try my advice. So now, Okay, okay. So Tafai Namia here says today is his birthday. Happy birthday to you. Happy, happy birthday. Um, okay, uh, let me. Okay, some more messages. Musa Batwa is also joining us. Says, uh, uh, join us from Asawa. Says, Kufuadwen Baumia should be blamed for current economic quagmire. 
we find ourselves is as a result of mismanagement and corruption. However, since the establishment of IPAC, political parties and civil society organizations have been offering proposals for electoral reform to EC in order to strengthen our democratic system, but it appears the immense and Bosman Asari are questionably changing the status quo. The IPAC is gradually becoming a rubber stamp, but they should be mindful of the consequences therein after. God save Ghana. That's coming from Musa Batwa. Idi Gideon Mutari is also joining us. Says a good morning. It is getting disgusting and tiresome uh, discussions of our problems as Ghanaians. Since our misleaders are unwilling to listen, nor act prudently to ignore to the benefit of the larger population of Ghana. My worry has to do with the fact that our president continuously lives at large. Lives large. Even though there's a loud cry by Ghanaians to stop him from this act. They should stop the frivolous excuses of using COVID, Russia, invasion of Ukraine, uh, etc., which I deem as an insult or an intelligence. As a people, Ghana must work again and change is imminent. There's also Ambassador Sampiale who's joining us. So now, the fact of a junk country has been established beyond all reasonable doubt. The NDC won this government, but they did not listen. Now, the problem is beyond just talking about it. The NDC should now exhibit the capacity to resolve the problem now. We should prove to Ghanaians that we have what it takes to turn the economy round and grow it soundly. Let's start because the NDC has human and technical capability to do so. Uh, before I forget, he also he also says on behalf of the Central Committee and entire membership of NDC Pro Forum, I wish to congratulate the Right Honourable Alban Sumana Bagbin. A happy uh, okay. I wish to wish. The Right Honorable Albert Sumana Bagbin, a happy birthday. We thank God for giving us such a unique statesman and selfless son. That's coming from Ambassador Sam Piale. Uh, Hadi Pickfam, the Nanado Baumia government has lost its credibility with respect to economic management. That means it's about honesty and truthfulness. The Nanado Baumia government, however, fancy blatant lying to the good people of Ghana. They promised to transform our economy, and today all we see is a free fall of the CD skyrocketing fuel prices and galloping inflation. Instead of the government to say to stay true to themselves and admit their failures, they keep shifting blames on external issues while preaching to Ghanaians that things will get better. If a bachelor lies that he's married, he's only deceiving his manhood. That is coming from Hadi Pickfab. And then let me end with Abbas Amogobo in Ofinsu. The problem of this Kufuado government is its inability to fight the unprecedented corruption of his appointees. Everybody is just grabbing. In some prisons, Kumasi prisons and others must be must just be expanded after the 2024 election. So those are some of the messages you're sending to us uh, on the our very first topic of discussion. If you're just joining us, welcome back. Mother of all talk shows, Elijah. My name is Sena Nombo. I'm in the studio. We're starting from my left. Uh, Honorable Mohamed Sukwaro, who is member of parliament, uh, for Sisala West. Sitting by him is Allah Jinu Safusini, a former member of parliament for Tamale Central, a private individual now, who is very hard hit by the economic situations we are confronted with. Everybody is. And then very close to him is Dede uh, Boatin. I wanted to be sure. I don't, uh, I, I've decided to leave out the English name because women are particular about the pronunciation of the English names. I can say Dede Boatin. That one is uh is is uh three teresa yes uh -huh. yes uh, yes no watching and always what i sit in my my head well so that's the panel that we have this morning we are moving on to the discussion of the issue of uh osaji for dr kwame kuma we'll start from my left we don't know about <coughs> And so, uh, I apologize. We have 20 minutes to go, which means you have five minutes on that particular oh, issue. It should be very brief. We have 20 minutes to go. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, unless I have uh, we are, we are different to, instructions. We are please. coming to speak about the only founder of this Yes, country. I understand. But I'm also so, working with time. And you know, so we are I apologize. talking about the founder of Ghana. Yes. So, But you have to manage for Anyway. Yes. Uh, so, yeah. Yeah. Thanks very much uh, once again, <laughs> Senna. Um, speaking about Dr. Uh, Osajafu um, Kwame Nkrumah, uh, I'm always happy any time his name is mentioned because um, many of the infrastructure that we compose of as a country um, 
well, I wasn't born then, but uh, what I was taught in school and also read about him indicates to me that uh, most of those things came about uh, during his era. Uh, when you speak about the Tamamoto, we are called Sombodam, and several other factories, not as we are experiencing today, not as we are experiencing under this government called One Day Silver. We are talking about proper factories that created jobs and the production people can still feel the impact of those factories. And uh, being the founder, if any other person uh, has a different view about who the founders or the founder of this country is, I believe, and I know many people agree with me, that we only have one founder, which is Dr. Kwame Nkrumah. He founded Ghana. Um, I read about him and per what we were taught in school indicated to me in 1947 when UGCC was formed uh, by Pa Grant, that is George Grant, um, uh, the, the current president's uncle J.B. Dankwa, Akwaje and Co. were part and uh, when Nkuma was in U.S. then uh, also I think he was a leader for the African students then in U.S. where he even established African sector and the purpose of that sector was to fight for African liberation even in U.S. So they brought him to come and join them and he was made the general secretary of the UGCC and because of um, different political ideologies he in Koma at the time even before he was brought in to um, come and join the UGCC he had that uh, you know vision in him about liberating Africa and for that matter Ghana then that he was for independence he thought or he said at the time that uh, we were capable of managing our own affairs and so we needed to be given the opportunity as people uh, to manage our affairs so he was always you know advocating for independence and uh, the likes of J.B. Dankwa and his group were also of the view that we were not ready for independence. And so out of that, they broke away. That was why he left to form CC, um, CPP, the Convention People Party. And so um, he contested in the 1951 election where he won almost all the seats. I think 34 out of 38 seats were won by the CPP government. And so at the 1952, the UGCC was uh, dissolved. There wasn't the party called UGCC. Mm -hmm. And so Nkuma was made the prime minister from 1952 to 1956, where he finally got the independence. And so when he was to address the gathering at the Polo Court then, um, he was surrounded by some uh, individuals and Italian, there's a, a name, um, I forgot some of the names, you cannot those people that surrounded him at the podium, I, I, per history and what I've learned, I didn't see any name like J.B. Dango as is being purported today as those that are part of the fandom fathers of this country. So I, I think strongly think that uh, the current president is only trying to, you know, distort the history of this nation just to give certain credence to his uncle J.B. Dango, who shouldn't, who sh shouldn't be so. We know that by the history, it is only Nkrumah who fought and funded this country, supported by his people, I mean the CPP people, because that's the only first political party that led this country in 1957. Um, and so the question I ask myself, if today, the president of the republic is saying that there are several people who fought for the independence, which includes his uncle, uh, J.B. Dankwa. We've had 11 different presidents since independence. That is only this time that he, Nanado Dankwa Kufado, is the president of this country. That he is saying to the people of Ghana that it is not only in Koma, who founded this country? There were several other people, including his uncle. Is he telling me, under the regime of uh, His Excellency, the former president, J.E. Kufour, they all didn't know of this history? 
Is he telling me, under the regime of flight of uh, late President Jerry John Rawlings, he didn't know that, or they were not all aware of this history. Is he telling me all the many other presidents we've had, none of them, it is only he, Menardo, when he became president, that he said, it wasn't only Nkrumah who founded this country, but rather many other people, including his uncle. Therefore, the history must be rewrite. And so, it is only out of, should I say, hatred per history, just as his uncle and his group do like in coma, that hatred has been transferred to his generation to ensure that the legacy of in coma is being attacked, which we and many other people, including yourself, I know, we will not sit and allow our history to be distorted by the current president. He can choose to say anything about his uncle, his political career, how he started forming UGCs and all of that. But to say that his uncle and his group were part of the founding fathers of this country, I, 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 I disagree with him. We only have one founder, and which is Dr. Kwame Nkrumah. I just said that Nkrumah broke away from UGCC to form CPP. After the 1951 elections, 1952, UGCC, where J.B. Danko and Co. were with, that's their political party, was dissolved. 1957, it was under the leadership of Nkrumah, CPP, which J.B. Danko wasn't a member of CPP. All the many other people he's mentioning as part of founding fathers of this country, none of them, they were not part of CPP. So how, I mean, I'm just struggling to, 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 today, for example, my brother sitting here, but uh, is not a member of NDC. And so I am a member of NDC. I know in 2024, shall like NDC will win the election. So after winning the election, if in the future somebody wants to talk about the people who were members of NDC in 2024 election, who fought for the victory to liberate the, 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 I mean, this country from the current hardship. I don't think the person would say that he voted was part because he also belongs to a certain political party at that time. He was fighting for a different ideology and certainly not for the interests of NDC. And so <laughs> there's no way that the pres president's assertion that the founder is more than one person and starting from the ugcc the formation of ugcc to 1957 all those people are supposed to be celebrated we, how can we celebrate people who were not ready for independence hmm. they were not ready at the time in common was saying that independence now they were saying independent later they are not ready. So how do you want us to celebrate them as part of people who fought for our independence? When they were, when they were, they were, they were seen against it. They didn't even hide it. <laughs> and so sometimes I, I wonder how politicians were trying to rewrite the history without even thinking about our own integrity. How the world will see us. We travel outside this country. When you mention that, that you are coming from Ghana, the only person they remember when it comes to our independent, mm -hmm. my uncle is here. He can tell you what you can testify yourself. It is in Kuma, Ghana. I've never heard anywhere that JB Dunquas Ghana. Oh, yes, I've never heard it anywhere you go. When you mention Ghana, the question that oh, in Kuma is Ghana, nobody will ask you, Are you coming from JB Dunquas Ghana? Wikipedia can go. All these things are written. So how, how many Ghana is almost uh, 60? How many years? 60? We are 60 plus. So is, is, is the president telling us that right for 1957 up to 2019, there was no one in this country. I just met said that we've had 11 different presidents, head of state. Nobody saw this mistake. It is only he, Nanado. Okay. Honorable, 
Thank you. Thank you very much. Elvis. Yeah, okay. Yes. But before I come, this is Mark Do, who, who, who usually watches us from Alajo. So now he's Elvis, a real MPP person. I've been listening to him on other sister stations. His analysis are very different from other MPP communicators like Solomon. As for the com economy, you don't need a prophet to tell you the state of it. If there's any greed after Gracie, I don't think that can be used to describe Ghana's economy. Sana, these our viewers will let them finally sack me from this, my party. I am I am NPP. There's nothing wrong with it. No. I have always maintained that it is important for us to engage in opposing partisan politics. Raising being that whether you are in the governing party or in the opposition, you have a role. In fact, opposition parties must even have better roles to put government on check to make sure the right thing is done. But the most important thing is that much as I may love my party and much as you may love yours, it is important that we love Ghana beyond our individual political parties and it is why I don't do propaganda and you realize that the difference is clear uh, when the others speak but let me address the issue of uh, you know is it Nkoma what as a founder of yes. Ghana okay so Sena it all started and I'm not speaking for five minutes it all started uh, many years ago the struggle for independence for the, Gold, the people of the Gold Coast has never been an issue without history. In fact, a lot of little, little things happened, starting from the formation of the Aboriginal Rights Protection Society, uh, the later the Fanti uh, configuration. configuration, and then all of that happened. But there was a skill where the momentum of our independence struggle took up a more serious and formidable front. Undoubtedly, beyond the Aboriginal Rights Society and the Fanti Configuration, nobody can deny UGCC as having had a visionary role, at least in creating an organized front for the struggle for independence. There's no debate about it. In fact, the in the wisdom of, and I choose my words carefully, George Grant, otherwise popularly called Pa Grant. This is the true founder of the UGCC, the United Gold Coast Convention, not JB Dankwa. The true founder. No, I'm not even rebutting you. So just read your phone. Yes. <laughs> the true founder, Pa Grant. Then others such as JB Dankwa, who later was representing the UGCC and his vision in what has become largely the eastern region today. So maybe you may want to call him the eastern regional chairman, even though we didn't have a region called eastern region then. You know, but as part of the, that belt, he was coordinating affairs. And so clearly, in 1947, after all of this, there was the need to call up Ghanaians in the diaspora who would be able to add momentum to the fight. And so Dr. Kwame Nkrumah, a young revolutionary activist of great pan-Africanism in the United States, who later studied after Pennsylvania went to, uh, you know, London School of Economics and Political Science, was invited over on the recommendation of one other great man in this country, Ebenezer Akwaje. He's the man they named the Akwaje Interchange after, in Osu. He recommended... And so Dr. Kwame Nkrumah came over uh, under the sponsorship of J.B. Dankwaden to be general secretary. But let me now go back to what happened immediately afterwards. We cannot tell this history without giving praises to what our chiefs did. You remember the then the chief of Osu? I think in private life, he's, he's, he goes with the name something Taylor. Mm? I'm talking about the chief, the guy chief, Bonnie the Ted. He organized and led demonstrations against high inflation of European imported products. 
that impose hardship on Ghanaians. And the aftermath of that particular rioting in January 1948 sharply resulted into our ex-service men who fought in the Second World War and were denied payment of their allowances to match up in a peaceful, unarmed protest in demand for their monies. That is what is popularly called the 1948 riots. Whereupon, on the 28th of February, uh, these harmless veterans were shot, leading to the death of three people. In fact, four people, but three known, three identified people. One is, I think, Sergeant Ajete, Corporal Atipo, and Private Odati Lamte. There was a fourth person whom till date nobody has been able to recognize. Not his name, not his family. And so if you go to the Christianburg Road where we have the Freedom Square, you realize that the statute, there is one without a headless statute. It represents that unknown hero. This is the reality. So it gave momentum to the struggle. The leaders of the political front, then UGCC, were arrested after a commission of inquiry blamed them for being the cause. That was where Dr. Kwame Nkrumah was first arrested as the leader, followed by uh, J.B. Dankwa Edward Akufado, who is father of the current president, uh, Obi Chebi Lamte, and uh, Ibn Zakwaje, and the others forming the big six. There were six in number. Shortly after their release from jail, after a month, what did we record in history? History recorded that there was a commission of inquiry at the instance of the Queen of England. And what happened? That gave to rise the COSI committee. The COSI committee had to probe into the happenings in the political front of Africa, and Ghana in particular at the time. Especially so when the Watson report had had overthrown, I think, the 1946 constitution, saying it did not take into consideration the plight of local indigents. Then the Queen saw need to lay path for a new constitution for us and a new leadership. And so it was where the betrayal among the brotherhood started. When they were in the heat of that event, a lot of the people denied as having having a hand in the direct organization of the riots and the series of confusions calling for independence. They all went behind the scenes and blamed Dr. Kwame Nkrumah for it. And Nkrumah came out and said, yes, if they say, I am the cause, then indeed I am the cause. So who founded Ghana? Because that is where the foundation for the formation of Ghana as a country started. Now, let us move into 1951. The Kosi Committee's report now indicated that let us in the National Assembly have a true representation of the people. The National Assembly then comprising of 84 seats, of which 38 out of the 84 were to be electable position. And that was the first ever universal suffrage that was held on the continent of Africa. Nkrumah was then, let us not forget, in jail at the, I think, Fort James. I'm sure I'm not going to San Fusenu will correct me if I am wrong. Whilst in prison, he contested on the ticket of his CPP after the series of confusions where he felt betrayed and was like, okay, let's fight these Europeans all out for independence now. The other leaders of the UGCC said, no, 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 let's not fight for independence now. Let us fight for independence in the shortest possible time. So now my question that comes is, what was the definition of shortest possible time? Even Jesus Christ in divine books, his, his, his shortest possible time of return is over 2,000 years now. So in complying with the shortest possible time, it actually means that we could have been there for another 15 years without independence, and we will still be able to classify it as a shorter time. But no, Nkrumah said now, and projected the now to a space of not exceeding 10 years, and won independence in 9 years after the 51 election, which CPP was the only party that presented candidates for all the 38 contestable seats. Nkoma himself contesting the Accra Central uh, Municipal seat, which he won. Not in Zuma seat, Accra Central seat, 
which he won out of goodwill whilst in jail. In fact, Kojo Bosio was the only parliamentary candidate then who went unopposed for the Winneba seat. Let's talk history. That's the only way we can liberate this country. And then uh, Bedema, who was special aid for Nkrumah, credited for organizing the election across, won a, a seat himself, and in the end, at the end of the day, the CPP won a total of 34 out of 38 seats. The UGCC won two out of the total. And I think we had two independent candidates. Senna, it was upon that victory that a National Assembly was duly constituted. And Dr. Kwame Nkrumah was then made leader of government business in the House. That was the beginning of independence. As leader of government business in 51, fast forward in 52, the General Assembly had the mandate of the Queen to elect a Prime Minister to lay a foundation for independence. And who was elected Prime Minister on 21st March 1952? It was Dr. Kwame Nkrumah. It was after that election, Dr. Kwame Nkrumah tabled what is known as the Motion of Destiny. In the National Assembly, the motion of destiny was, and it was contained in the motion of destiny, that be it be moved this day, that the black people of the British colony of the Gold Coast will rule themselves, for we have what it takes to control our own affairs. This was what was contained in the motion. And so it was from there, in 52, the whole issue started. A lot of it we can't talk about because of time constraint until independence was eventually granted uh, the green light in 56 and it was it came to practical you know public celebration in 1957 on the eve of the 6th of march but then let us realize that even after declaration of independence ghana was not fully was not a republic we were still under the the queen we're still under the Queen, represented by Sir Charles Aidan Clark. And so it was not until July 1st, 1960, that we became a republic and accordingly commemorated same. Yeah. Now, most <coughs> importantly, in just two minutes, if you, in, in fact, yeah, one minute, if you, you allow me, minutes. you realize then that after all of this, the fight against Nkrumah and his building of the motorway laying an industrial foundation for not just political emancipation but also economic em em emancipation leading to the formation of about 15 factories which we'll talk about another day including the glass factory car type factory even matches was was being produced at kd okay. all of that happened so at the end of the day if this is the smooth flow of history it makes sense that the credit for the independence of this country is, is entirely in commerce. That does not mean we do not recognize the supportive role of other people. And to conclude on this controversy of J.B. Duncan and Chroma contrast, which I am particularly not interested in, we are not arguing. Proponents of this argument in favor of Nkrumah don't say J.B. Duncan hasn't done anything. He has also contributed in a number of ways. Remember the Watson Committee inquiry, Commission of Inquiry, described him as a doyen of African politics because of a number of activism he did, including proposing that the establishment of a one external campus of University of London in Nigeria was enough for the entire Africa. He disagreed and advocated for the establishment of a University College of Gold Coast here, which has become, you know, uh, the University of Ghana. So he has also contributed, apart from the UGCC issues, and we can praise him for that, but he cannot be replaced with the undebatable and unquestioned role of Nkrumah. As for the revelations contained in the Great Deception and the others, another day when you give us a platform, we're going to educate you, viewership Thank you. on that. Um, okay, so let's take a, a very brief break. We'll be right back. He has labored. He has Are you put off by the very low standards that most accommodation facilities offer? Well, it's time to heave a heavy sigh of relief. 
Colindale's Court is here. here. Located at Birch Street Community 12 off the Tema Motorway, Colindale Court offers you top of the range short and long stay accommodation steeped in luxury. Our two bedroom apartment is what you and the family need for your weekend getaway. While our one bedroom apartment gives you a peaceful ambience to work from home. Our rooms are fully furnished, air conditioned and come with all you need at your back and call. A well stocked kitchen, dining area, Wi-Fi, DSTV, Netflix access and an endless list of other amenities thus creating a unique sense of place far exceeding your expectations. Our gym and swimming pool exactly suit your preference for keeping fit and recreational activities. We also have a very spacious conference room for your business meetings. Collindale Court offers even more. Our rooftop bar is a thing of scenic beauty, giving you and your loved ones a bubbly nightlife of music and dance. Call us now to make your reservations. 0243-186017 or 0244-258-332. Collindale Court. Exceptional, Exceptional comfort, comfort for, for beautiful, beautiful people. people. Trasaco Estates, home to Accra's most beautiful and luxurious homes, presents its newest addition, Trasaco Springs, a premium master plan community of service plots surrounded by an exhaustive list of amenities. The gated community of Tema to Accra Motorway presents you the finest opportunity to own a land that suits your preferred size, budget and payment terms. Trasaco Springs is open to you for development. Our on-site sales executives are ready. Call on 055-659-2658. Tess on the mother of all talk show, Alaji and Alaji live on TV on Pan African TV, live on radio on Radio Gold 90.5 FM. Uh, we we're talking about uh, the celebration on Founders Day. Uh, let me hear from Alaji. And uh, it was declared a holiday. And for me, that was very, very significant. You know, when His Excellency John mm -hmm. Evans Atamils came into power, he thought that one thing that the country could do was to honor the memory of uh, Dr. Kwame Nkrumah and create and establish in his name a Founders Day to celebrate his independence. We worked tirelessly to ensure that we convinced our colleagues who were in the minority that it was proper that we honor our heroes. Mm -hmm. It was around that time that they came out with this concept of founders. Founders. Apostrophe S apostrophe. We had founder. Apostrophe S. And they said the apostrophe must come after the mm -hmm. S. That was around that time that the debate started. No one had ever. The question of who was the founder of the nation had never been an issue until Professor John Ivan Satamils came up with the idea that we honor his memory. Then people then came out and said, well, we had many founders and then we... Uh, and you know, and it was not only in Kuruba who founded Ghana, and we said, look, we are talking about leadership, the leadership of Nkrumah in the project. What did he do that manifested our desire to rule ourselves? What did he do? And you will see that up until the time that the uh, Nkrumah was invited to be the general secretary of the UGCC, the UGCC was cozy. 
with the imperial powers. They were very cozy. In fact, the plan was not for Ghana to be independent. The plan was to transfer power to some select group of people who were either royals or lawyers or and the lawyers invariably were royals or rich men's children. We have a plan and to perpetuate the colonial rule in Ghana through the establishment of uh, a West Minister type of government. That was different. And that is why the MPP has been always in bed with the idea of a West Minister type of government. That, that was it. And it, it comes from the UGCC thing. It comes from the J.B. Dankwa thing. I mean, J.B. Dankwa is described as a doyen of politics because he was a very easy and willing accessory to the imperialist. Any time they wanted to do anything in this country, he was contracted, he was used to, as a fodder to test whatever they wanted to do. And because he was highly regarded in this country, he got all the elite chiefs to agree to do those things. And most of the people to agree. That's why he was described. Not that he had some extra, I mean, extraordinary political powers. He couldn't win a seat in, his, uh, in, in Chile. He couldn't. Which one? The, the one he lost to the people teacher. The, the one he lost to uh, uh, Kwasi. Uh, the people teacher. I don't know why he lost the people teacher. Mm. He couldn't win. You understand? So the fact is, yes, we describe they described me as a doer of politics, and it was it was an imperialist agenda. I mean, they needed to recognize his contribution to the struggle. It was an imperialist agenda, and so the man who contributed, who fought, who gave leadership, who gave impetus who motivated us, who made us believe we could also be, who made us believe in ourselves. It's not a common Kuma. Why? You don't need to look far. No brother. You know Sene. Who am I? Who is Sena? Who is Elvis? Dr. Kwame Kuma gave us the reason to believe that we can. Yes, we can. Because we're not royals. We don't come from any royal family. They do commoners. You understand? Fisherman's children. I mean, that's why when he was gathering the people together to try to fight for the independence, they called them veranda boys. That's why. They just thought that he was a riffraff. So we were not supposed to have a role to play. That I was going to be modeled on some royal titan. And so the people must understand. That the love, I mean, somebody now says that he's a showboy. Who popularized the word, the word showboy? Come on, Kuruma. When he was sung to, Kuruma, Kwame Kuruma, showboy. I want to see you, Kwame Kuruma, showboy. That's, yeah. That's Kwame Kuruma. You know, so, it's just, but the imperialist agenda was always at work. No matter what he was doing, but yet the man has told us, told us that we prepare independence with all its dangers to what <laughs> colonialism in servitude or something like that. Yes. So yes, we, for 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 us as a people. Yes, in Kuruma, at the time we got independence, how many of Ghanaians were graduates? How many Ghanaians were expatriates? Um, but yes, he, what he simply said was that we were prepared to put our destiny into our own hands. And he knew, Kwame Kuruma knew, that he needed to build the human resource base of this country. He knew. He thought of it. He acted on it. And he actually accomplished it. By the time Kwame Nkrumah left office, the time he was overthrown, a greater number of Ghanaians had, had received quality education at the highest level. Because he believed that the investment in the human resource base of the country was the way to go. I am, yes, when I heard that the day had been declared at a holiday, I was overjoyed, to be honest with you. Because, it, the, yes, because the very opposition to it and the review 
of the holidays act was to remove Nkrumah's date to be celebrated as a holiday. Then if the president after six years has come back to realize that mm -mm, that man ought to be celebrated. I was just overjoyed. I just said, uh-uh, well, what, what has changed? Because the reason why we reviewed and made it a memorial, called Nkrumah Memorial Day, was to remove it from the, holiday, the class of holidays. <laughs> so what has changed? <laughs> what, has, what has changed? So, uh, thank you. Uh, we, we wish uh, um, Kuruma uh, 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 happy birthday wherever he is. He's done well for this country, and we'll continue to cherish his memory. Mm. Thank you. Before I come to you, Didi, uh, Nasir Mohammed says the nation Ghana didn't exist as an entity until Nkuma put it together. The separate entities like Ashanti, Gold Coast, Transvolta, and Northern Territories were put together to be what we call Ghana. This Nana and his people who don't even want us to have independence now say they are founders. If we're looking for traitors, we can leave that to them. Traitors Day. That's coming from Nasir Mohammed. Uh, they, they will conclude for me. Okay. I'm listening to you. No. Okay. Thank you. Can for the <laughs> <laughs> I'm just hoping that you will say well, thank you all very much. Yes. <laughs> and then we'll close. <laughs> We've saved the social <laughs> Yes, I, I think much has been said, but to add to it, um, we celebrate the Founders' Day, and we know, and it's a historical fact, that Dr. Kwame Nkrumah is the founder of um, Ghana, the then called Gold Coast, because we see the remarkable things that he did, and Kwame Nkrumah was a visionary. He was someone who knew where he was taking the country of Ghana to. Not just the country, but also the African continent. That is why he called for the Union of Africa. For Africa to unite and to use its resources for their benefit. And the debate about the supposed big sis, I think this is something that we, 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 we shouldn't uh, prolong it because right in the history or the history that uh, is factual, we get to know that it was Kwame Nkoma who was at the forefront of all the activities regarding Ghana now. How he was able to lead Ghana to independence. And for us to now bring in the supposed five, I think it's something that we should uh, critically look at. For us to erect other monuments at the Kwame Nkoma Museum, just to honor these people, I think their faces alone on the currency is, is enough of uh, glory to them. But to make changes, to erect new monuments at the Kwame Nkoma Museum, it's something that we, we, we shouldn't considered to be done. So on the 20th of September, the Socialist Movement of Ghana was out on the street with placards to protest against the revisionist agenda of trying to distort the history that we've known since um, childhood till now. And these are facts, as I say, not um, changing, not changing the truth we have to understand that Kwame Nkoma is someone who is recognized worldwide and a threat to imperialist powers. The bringing in of Buzia and the others, I don't think is something that we should hurt for because they have been honored in several spaces as well. And the day that is 21st September, which marks the 113th birthday of Osajifo Dr. Kwame Nkoma, it should be celebrated well, it should be commemorated well. So on the 21st, the SMG took it upon itself to organize people to celebrate Dr. Kwame Nkoma for his remarkable works towards the development and the independence of Ghana, the then Gold Coast, which we had um, several people talking or hitting on the facts. We had people like Professor Raymond Atuguba and Comrade Kwesi Pratt himself who laid the facts very straight that Kwame Nkoma 
is the only founder of Ghana. And therefore, all this cacophony is about um, the other big five and why are they also not recognized as the founders is something uh, very trivial that we, we should be, be thinking of as a country. Because his efforts in the um, West African Students' Union is something that was very remarkable and led him to do much exploits through the UGCC, through to the formation of the CPP, where he won elections hands down, and how he brought on board the people on the street, how he brought together the masses. This is someone that we talk about as a founder of our country. And for us to try to um, bring down or dwindle down his name, it's, it's something that we, we, we should fight against. That is what we protest against as the socialist movements of Ghana. We need to uphold his name and his efforts because in history we realize he did great things for the people of Ghana and also across the continent, his impact and how he was even betrayed by this same supposed big five. And now they want to share in his praise, they want to share in his fame. I think we, we cannot condone to such. So I reiterate again that we have just one founder who is Osajifo Dr. Kwame Nkoma. And then we need to recognize us because even out of Ghana, across the continent, it is being recognized that he is the founder of this country. He did great jobs opening factories for the people to be able to solve their basic needs, to be able to meet their basic requirements of life. His support to the people of Guinea, how he coagulated the segregation between the country. At first, Ghana wasn't this homogeneous country that we see. But through the efforts of Osajifo Dr. Kwame Nkoma, we see it as it is today. And now trying to denigrate his name, trying to bring the supposed um, revisionist agenda, trying to revise and distort the history is something that we should fight against as a country. Okay, Didi, thank yeah. you. <laughs> okay, thank you. Didi is a member you. of the Socialist Movement of Ghana. In fact, they are perhaps the only entity that every 21st September, since this whole agenda of uh, Founders Day, Kwame Nkrumah Memorial Day started, actually organizes a celebration of Nkrumah as the founder of this republic. In I didn't realize the real impact of Nkrumah. I, didn't, I thought it was a fight between him and UGCC. And to Dr. Percy drew my attention to the real struggle after 1954. If you want to understand the history of Ghana, go and read what happened between 1954 and 1956. Nkrumah had won an election in 1954 that was supposed to grant him his wish of independence for Ghana. Then some forces emerged within this country. The kind of work they had to do during that period will give you a very clear idea as to what really happened. Well, thank you very much for tuning into Alaji and Alaji for today. Let me say happy belated birthday to Vicentia Do, Belinda Santi, who is a police officer, and also uh, greet uh, Chairman Atakli Banini, who is uh, chairman of the NDC in Ablekuma South. Good morning to you. But let me say a happy, happy birthday to Right Honorable A.S.K. Bagman. He is the current Speaker of Parliament, one of the longest serving MPs we've had. And a happy birthday to you. There's a lot to say to you. Uh, fantastic man when you meet him. Fantastic man. Uh, I wish you all the best. I wish you good health as you grow. I know the one thing every one of you pray for is good health. So I wish you, above all things, very, very good health. On behalf of everybody here at Pan-African TV, and also the Alaji and Alaji team. I want to say a big thank you to Elvis Buta for joining us today. He's a former deputy uh, national organizer of the New Patriotic Party. Elvis, <laughs> well, I, <laughs> yeah, no further comment, no further comment. But I, I think the road you have chosen is a tough road. It will get you into trouble. But, but keep on that road because those are your thoughts and not the thoughts of anybody. You are speaking your thoughts. 
not the thought of anybody. And I appreciate that. Uh, Teresa Dede Boatin is a member of the Socialist Movement of Ghana. A big thank you to Alagi. Wonderful to see you. At least he made time off his busy schedule. Even the heat is taking in the north to come and join us. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. That's why he says a private individual now. And wonderful to meet you for the very first time. Uh, Mohamed Suparo, Honorable Member of Parliament for Sisala West, join us today. My name is Sena Numbo. A big thank you to affiliate stations across the country. Thank you very much for providing us your platform. We're live on Pan African Television, uniquely African. We're celebrating six years of concentrating and focusing on content that is relevant to the African continent. And it's a thing we need to be paying attention to. We're live on Radio Gold on your power station, Radio Gold 90.5 FM, and also on our Hunter 92.3 FM. We are back same time next week with another edition of the show. Have a fruitful week. But before then, enjoy the rest of your weekend.